Welcome. I'm really happy to have you all here today and, and excited to share with you this amazing, um, the amazing pre presentation we have today. My name is Lorraine Charles and I am the Executive Director of NAMO, one of the co-hosts of the summit today. So welcome. The Migration Summit 2022, organized by MIT Refugee Action Hub, NAMO, Karam Foundation, Paper Airplanes, and the, and the MIT Abdul Latif Jamil World Education Lab is a month-long convening designed to build bridges between diverse communities of displaced learners, universities, companies, nonprofits and NGOs, social enterprises, foundations, philanthropists, researchers, policymakers, around key challenges and opportunities for refugee and migrant communities. This year, we're exploring the theme of education and workforce development in displacement through virtual events hosted by participating partners around the world. Today, it's my absolute pleasure to introduce to you um, Education for Employment. Today, we will hear from Gadir and Elizabeth and their colleagues from Education for Employment. They will discuss the trends, challenges, and successes within the livelihood space for refugees, particularly within regards to women, technology, and the changes in the marketplace following COVID-19 in Jordan. The panel aims to address the overarching question about refugees, refugee livelihoods in Jordan. Who does it work for? So I just want to say very quickly that Gadir and I met a long time ago in Dubai before NAMA was even conceived when EFE were just sort of, you know, embarking in, in a new phase of the development. And I'm really excited to have her here today. And I'm really impressed with everything that she's done. I've interviewed her twice for two different pieces of research. She's taken me out for dinner in, in Amman. So we know each other pretty well. I'm really excited to have her here. So Gadir and Elizabeth and everyone else, over to you. Uh, thank you so much for this warm uh, introduction. And yes, we go back a uh, long time ago since Dubai and then Amman. And uh, I'm always happy to, to be able to share uh, what we do with an EFE and always meet with uh, our partners, um, individuals or companies and, and all of that. So first of all, I'd like to thank you so much for um, hosting uh, and, and uh, uh, organizing uh, this summit. We're so happy to be uh, part of it. Uh, I'd like to welcome people who have joined us today and I'd like to encourage them to visit our website, www.efe.org to learn more about uh, our programs. Um, today, we're going to highlight uh, uh, part of what we are doing within EFE, uh, which is uh, helping refugees uh, in Jordan, uh, which has been uh, our mission for the past uh, several years because of the political environment in our region and the number of refugees uh, Jordan has been hosting for the past several years. Uh, and I'm very happy to be joined today by uh, Cheyenne uh, Qasim, Deputy Director uh, Deputy Country Director of AFD, the French Agency Development Agency in Jordan, uh, Hamdan Yaqub, the head of the Syrian Crisis Response Unit in the Ministry of Labor, uh, my colleague Lizzie Clark, the Partnerships and Business Development Manager, uh, and Yamama Musa, one of the Syrian refugee uh, alumna that uh, uh, who, who joined EFE, one of the EFE's programs, and Salam Mohammed, another uh, nice lady from the Syrian refugees who have uh, received uh, our uh, programs uh, in the past. Uh, if you allow me, I would like to share my screen. Uh, one second. Okay, and I want to share a very short video with you. Uh, okay. And just give me one second. Okay. قبل ما اشتغل كان ما كان عندي هدف نهائيا سواء لحالي نفسية اني انا منغلقة على المجتمع انا ما بعرف شو عم بصير برا لما اشتغلت فتحت على المجتمع كتير وتعلمت كتير اشياء 
وصرت انا بحس حالي من ضمن هذا المجتمع انا مالي كسوريه انا منهم وفيهم وبتعامل معهم كانهم هن صاروا اهلي We started Sorry, Gadir, we don't have any video. We don't have any videos. Oh, oh, oh um, I apologize. No ah, okay, just give me one, one more second then. Okay, I apologize. It's always these uh, tech stuff. Uh, one second. Um. I apologize. تعالي تعالي. تعالي انقذ الموقف. لا it's fine. بس هذا مش عم يفتح. Okay, in the meantime, until this is fixed, I hope you can still hear me. I can tell you a little bit about uh, EFE. So EFE is a non-profit organization. It's established in 2006, and we are part of an affiliate network. Uh, we are in Jordan, Palestine, Tunisia, Morocco, Algeria, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Yemen, with support offices in the US, Madrid, and Dubai. We have been training youth uh, in different programs around the world, around the MENA region specifically where we work. Uh, as uh, the whole network, we have trained more than 130,000 youth around the, the, the affiliate offices, and we're able to link these youth with the private sector with jobs. Uh, our approach is, is very much demand driven, and we train youth and link them with economic uh, opportunities uh, in the end. Uh, during uh, uh, our programs, uh, we tailor them for different tracks, and you will learn more about it as we move forward uh, with uh, uh, the, the, the video and then the slides. I hope you can hear it now. Let's try one more time. Can you now? Yes. قبل ما اشتغل كان ما كان عندي هدف نهائيا سوالي حالي نفسية اني انا منغلقة عن المجتمع انا ما بعرف شو عم بصير برا لما اشتغلت فتحت على المجتمع كثير وتعلمت كثير اشياء وصرت انا بحس حالي من ضمن هذا المجتمع انا مالي كسورية انا منهم وفيهم وبتعامل معهم كأنهم هن صاروا اهلي We started working with uh, refugees uh, in Jordan because we believe they are part of the, the social cohesion in Jordan. And we provide them with skills that will help them, whether they stay in Jordan or go back to their home one day or travel with the skills somewhere else. It's been a lot of challenges since the beginning. It was very important to adapt to the legislation because the Syrians can't do all the jobs in, in Jordan. So we try to, to find some solution to propose them, some trainings related to their skills, but also to working opportunities here in Jordan. I know that young people in Morocco, in Egypt, Palestine, Jordan are very talented and all they need is the opportunity. And this is what we do at EFE. Uh, being a Palestinian refugee, I was always blessed with people around me uh, who gave me opportunities. And uh, working with education for uh, employment enables me from uh, giving these opportunities to other uh, young people. I was not feeling well because I didn't have a job, I couldn't continue to live in my life between the knowledge and the knowledge. اي اف اي حسيت هم الوطن الثاني لإلي او الحضن الثاني حضن الوطن لما احتضنونا انا وزملائي السوريين بالاردن يعني هن ساعدوني باني لاقي وظيفه كانوا يجيبوا لنا مجموعه شركات من داخل الاردن طبعا ومن خلالهم انا توظفت وخليت سكشن الصندقه على اساس انه يجيني منه مردود مالي واني كمل من خلال عملي يعني الدخل اللي بيوصلني ممكن اني اوفر جزء مالي منه لحتى اقدر اكمل دراستي بالجامعات هون EFE has done a lot of work recently with refugees. So we've had great success in the hospitality sectors, in some of the construction sectors, 
uh, in some IT sectors to get uh, refugees the ability to work. بحس حالي اني انا مو لاجئه او مغتربه بحس حالي اني انا بوطني وهذا شيء كثير بريحني بالنسبه لي ماديا بعد ما انا اشتغلت واخذت الشغل اكيد ماديا استفدت كثير صار في لي دخل صرت احس حالي حدا فعال بالمجتمع Yeah, I hope you enjoyed uh, watching uh, the uh, short uh, video, but we thought this is going to put you in the in the environment of uh, what we're doing. And uh, to continue with what I started saying about uh, EFE, uh, as I mentioned, we're uh, there from 2006. We concentrate a lot on the women empowerment and more than 65% of our beneficiaries are women. And at least 85% of our graduates are linked uh, with jobs. In Jordan, uh, uh, we have trained more than 18,000 youth. And as I mentioned earlier, as all of the affiliates, we trained more than 130,000 youth. Our cycle starts always with a market assessment to understand the jobs needed in the market, because everything we do is demand driven. We uh, uh, develop the curriculum accordingly, according to what the private sector needs. And then we reach to the youth and we do the matching before we even start any training uh, courses. Matching happens before we start even the training because it's important to link the right youth with the right skills, with the right programs. We conduct the training and, and uh, develop uh, the, the skills uh, programs. Uh, in, in a way that enables them to learn work readiness programs and also technical or vocational as needed. And then, of course, comes the job placement uh, uh, for these youth and uh, supporting them with income generation activities. Along the way, we have the MNDE, the monitoring and evaluation uh, uh, part of the whole program. Our core tracks are basically the job training and placement that ends with uh, uh, jobs, jobs, full-time jobs. The second track is the self-employment track. And uh, this was one of uh, the important tracks that we benefited uh, refugees with, because um, as we will learn a bit later from my colleague Hamdan, will tell us more about the regulations, in the Ministry of Labor, some of the sectors were closed uh, for some of, for the refugees. So we had to invent other uh, options for them to be able to generate incomes. So the job training and placement for them in some of the sectors, but also allowing them and enabling them uh, to work from home uh, in lots of cases so that they are able to generate income. Uh, online freelancing track, which has been a great uh, program we piloted together with the AFD, the French Ag Development Agency, uh, that showed uh, great success specifically for uh, refugees uh, in Jordan. And there is a program that we call Finding a Job is a Job, and specifically for university students who we help them find jobs themselves. There are other supplementary tracks uh, involved about upskilling uh, employees, uh, career counseling for public schools, national awareness campaigns, and support the public and uh, private sectors. Uh, in Jordan, uh, we have trained more than 3,000 refugees uh, so far, and as uh, I mentioned perhaps earlier in the uh, video, uh, refugees form a very uh, important uh, element of uh, the Jordanian population, and we have to direct our attentions to helping them live a decent life uh, in Jordan, and this happens through enabling them to work uh, and obtain a decent uh, work. Um, most of the refugees we have helped uh, in Jordan in the past were Syrians and a few Palestinians and other Iraqis, Sudanese, Libyans, uh, Somalis and, and Yemenis. Uh, we always thank our partners, of course, who have been uh, helping us, supporting us in, in uh, these initiatives and these programs uh, that we have been always uh, uh, concentrating on. Uh, these are the uh, slides. And now I would like to turn 
uh, to uh, um, Cheyenne from the AFD, who is going to help us, uh, let us know more about the AFD uh, and uh, your uh, programs uh, related to uh, refugees in particular, uh, as part of the bigger uh, scope of AFD in Jordan, which uh, definitely also focuses on uh, Jordanians, but also with uh, special care uh, to uh, refugees uh, in Jordan. To you, Cheyenne. Thank you very much, uh, Khadir, and thank you for uh, this opportunity um, to, to, to present a bit uh, of uh, the activities of AFD in Jordan. Um, AFD has been uh, active in Jordan for the past uh, 16 or 17 years now, uh, and um, since 2017, so uh, not long ago actually, and, uh, and after the beginning of the, of the Syrian refugee crisis, uh, we had uh, the, the chance to have um, a dedicated grant window to fund some projects uh, to, to benefit to the, uh, the most vulnerable people, including the uh, Syrian refugees. And at that time, and given the fact that we didn't have much, um, much, uh, much money to, uh, to fund some projects, we, uh, we, we, we launched a study to, uh, to identify the priority needs uh, for the most vulnerable people uh, in Jordan. And at that time, five years ago, uh, uh, the, the, the assessment was uh, actually pretty large. Uh, and uh, and we, we, we funded uh, several projects in several sectors, uh, such as the water sector, to, um, which was historically the, the big uh, sector of intervention of, of AFD, but with the government to fund, for instance, uh, to finance uh, some wastewater treatment plant. Um, with the window, we used uh, part of the funding to, um, to, for social components in order to um, work with the government to improve the, the global infrastructures in the water sector, but to allocate some of the funding and the grant funding to, um, to improve the living conditions of the most vulnerable people uh, through uh, delivery of uh, basic services and infrastructure, basic infrastructures, for instance. Uh, that was one, uh, one part. We also um, uh, identified uh, through the study that uh, uh, as the number of uh, refugees was uh, growing in Jordan, there was a real issue of social cohesion. And uh, we could see in some areas that the, 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 the services delivered to the populations uh, should be, in, uh, should, uh, should be uh, improved uh, in order to, uh, to decrease the tensions be between the, the two populations, the most vulnerable Jordanians and the Syrian refugees. So uh, we, we worked with the Jordanian civil defense, for instance, to, uh, to improve the equipments in terms of uh, uh, response to, uh, to, to, to all risk uh, in terms of um, ambulances and uh, um, uh, intervention vehicles in, uh, in, in, in many kinds. Uh, but to improve where the, in the areas where there was um, some tensions, uh, the, the possibility and the capacities of the, go the Jordanian government to uh, deliver the services to all the populations, no matter the, the Jordanians or uh, refugees. Um, that was another, uh, another sector. And in the end, we, we, made the, uh, we, we reconducted uh, the same assessment, the same study uh, one year ago, to um, to see if we should uh, if we should adapt our uh, our uh, context our intervention uh, through this grant window and actually we we saw some um, some differences uh, five years ago the the, the the one of the major uh, flow for the refugees and the most vulnerable people was the the, the delivery of services and now um, uh, and Actually, it was no surprise to us and uh, no surprise to IFI uh, staff. Uh, the main uh, challenge is the, the employment. Uh, provide uh, job opportunities to, uh, to, the, to the refugees because uh, we are talking about, uh, about people and families who settled 10 years ago, five years ago, uh, with the hope at that time to, um, to, to go elsewhere and uh, return back to home or elsewhere um, in other uh, countries. 
And um, five years later, uh, the, the situation has not changed fundamentally. Uh, so they they need to uh, they, they needed to uh, to to access to the job market, and uh, uh, Radir uh, mentioned it. Um, there are some sectors that are um, uh, open to refugees, uh, and there is a mismatch between the 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 basic skills of uh, the the people in uh, looking for a job and the actual job opportunities. So we, we, we discussed a lot with um, all um, uh, partners, NGOs and governments um, to, um, to address this specific issue. And we launched uh, a few years back uh, a program with, uh, with IFI to, um, to, to, to improve and to, uh, to offer job opportunities through job placement, uh, through uh, soft skills training, through um, uh, many components that would help uh, in fine the, the, the refugees and uh, Jordanian people to, uh, to access the, the, the job market. And um, I wanted just to highlight the new, uh, the new program we have signed uh, with, uh, with IFI. So this will be the second one. Um, and we uh, signed a few, year, few weeks ago. And we, which will focus especially on the on the women empowerment, uh, the women participation to uh, the job market will be uh, the priority of this uh, of this project, and uh, we are quite proud of this uh, of this one because this will be the first. I don't know if you are familiar with the OECD uh, uh, classification in terms of uh, project impacts. It's it's a DAC two. Uh, project, meaning that uh, the, the, the reduction of inequalities between men and women will be uh, the, the main and the, prior, the, the priority of the project. So it's in the continuity of the pre previous program we had with IFI, but this time we'll, uh, we'll have uh, um, a clear focus on the, on the women participation to the job market. And this is uh, a pride to us, to us because this will be the first project uh, in its kind uh, for AFD in Jordan. Uh, I've tried to be uh, as um, fast as possible, Khadir, because I know that uh, there are a lot of people to, to talk after me. But uh, I'm uh, I would be happy to give you more details if you if you want. Thank you so much, uh, Cheyenne. Uh... Uh, for, for this uh, summary, for your uh, partnership with EFE, for all the impact you are doing in Jordan uh, with Jordanians and uh, refugees uh, as well. And I would like to encourage everyone as I move forward with the, the following speakers to uh, think about questions you might want to ask uh, to Cheyenne or to any other uh, uh, speakers who are going to tell us more about uh, their contribution uh, over here. Uh, so. Um, now I'd like to move to Hamdan. Hamdan uh, uh, Yaqub works with the Ministry of uh, Labor, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, he could guide us uh, towards uh, uh, the ministry's uh, initiatives and uh, how they are looking at uh, uh, the, the refugees uh, in Jordan in terms of their work and uh, how they were able to facilitate uh, uh, the, the uh, achieving some decent jobs for the refugees uh, in Jordan. So to you, Hamdan. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for inviting me for this event. Actually, it's a pleasure for me. Uh, as we all know, the Jordanian labor market is one of the main uh, sectors affected by the refugees crisis and migrant workers. Due to uh, different actually factors, uh, big, a large number of refugees, uh, limited the resources in Jordan, high unemployment rate, and already low economic growth rates. Uh, in terms of distributing uh, international responsibilities in sharing the burdens uh, of hosting Syrian refugees and within the axis of the Jordan Compact, the Ministry of Labor is uh, taking a series of necessary action within uh, this framework, uh, represented by a set of the procedures and measures necessary to prepare the instruction to become more flexible and easier for Syrians and refugees including exemption, ex, exemption from uh, the work permit fees and the creation of uh, types of uh, work permits. Uh, we, we recently actually launched, uh, established a new uh, type of work permits, a flexible one, uh, which classifies work uh, within occupational groups. Uh, 
so that worker can move between uh, them freely and without uh, restriction and uh, with no other measures. Okay, uh, the Ministry of Labor also supervises and leads the livelihood sector within uh, the Jordan Response Plan to the Syrian crisis, which aims uh, to ensure decent and sustainable livelihoods and create economic opportunities for both Syrian refugees and Jordanians in host communities. Uh, the sub objectives of the sector include enhancing access to, to the job, to job opportunities that are in line with decent work and national and international protection standards in the work, uh, uh, the work environments. Uh, this goal uh, cannot be achieved without systemic vocational education and training programs that are appropriate to uh, our national priorities and standards also. The Ministry of Labor is working to direct international organization and local communities, uh, community institutions uh, through leading the livelihood sector team uh, within the Jordan Response Plan to the Syrian crisis uh, to strengthen vocational and technical training programs and mechanism through projects implemented by international and local organization and in partnership with official a vocational training service providers and the private sector. Uh, this approach comes from the component of the GRP uh, actually to be in line with the holistic international approach to dealing with the Syrian refugees crisis, which, which uh, is represent, represented, represented in the Jordan Compact as an output from outcomes of the London Conference. And on the uh, mutual commitment actually toward refugees between Jordan and the international community for transforming the crisis into an opportunities and uh, to use the available human resources from uh, the refugees and the host communities and work to train, rehabilitate and develop, uh, it, it, develop it at the same time to support the private sector, especially the industrial se sector to benefit from existing and potential agreements, especially in the areas of investment and the production and export. Accordingly, all parties to the response plan, including the livelihood sector, work to achieve development and the humanitarian goals that contribute to the development of the local community, refugees and other migrant workers, of which develop vocational training uh, and education and the training policies, uh, sorry, they develop vocational education and the training policies and the strategies, relying on the demand component in the labor market and directing them, uh, directing training programs. Uh, the role of the private sector and its involvement in setting vocational training and education policies, develop vocational education and the training curricula. Uh, and the role of the training providers, uh, regional coordination and the program promotion, uh, the apprenticeship and their importance in building and investing the next generation, uh, exchange of experiences between countries which similar experiences, uh, similar, similar experiences, skills development, experience recognition and prior uh, learning and education economic uh, uh, integration with the aim of maximizing economic benefit, training mechanism and the capacity of the training institutions, considering also finally considering the future of work paths, paths and skills. Uh, actually, in the end, uh, I would like to thank, uh, thank you and thank uh, actually uh, IFI for the distinguished role as, uh, as an active partner in the livelihood sector for its innovative methods uh, of promoting employment through the developing, uh, through the development of learning mechanism and vocation and the technical rehabilitation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Hamdan, uh, for uh, the, this great summary uh, informing us about the policies and uh, uh, the, the overall uh, uh, approach uh, the Ministry of Labor is taking in Jordan towards uh, the, the refugees. Uh, so thank you so much.
Um, now, I'd, I'd like to uh, invite uh, my colleague Lizzie from uh, EFE, as I mentioned earlier, who is going to um, ask uh, our two um, alumna, Yamama and Salam, uh, who have been uh, part of our programs within EFE. Lizzie is going to ask them uh, some questions and uh, kindly uh, translate uh, from Arabic to English and from English to Arabic. Uh, so to you, Lizzie. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we have uh, two of our uh, alumni with us today who are going to be speaking about their experiences uh, coming to Jordan and working here. We have with us uh, Yamama, who you guys saw uh, a moment ago in the video, as well as um, Salam. And also just um, a, a logistical remark that the three of us are actually sitting together right now, but so that we're not toggling between the volume and the microphones. Uh, they're going to be speaking through my microphone, so you might want Want to change the rearrangement of the screen so that you can see Imama and Salam as well, because otherwise it's going to be just me that's, that's showing on the screen. Um, but uh, Imama, I'd like to ask you first, can you um, tell us about when you came to Jordan from Syria and your experience in general? Okay, I'm Yamama Musa Jadaya. I'm 30 years old. I came to Jordan in 2013. My experience was the first two years ago. There was no experience in the first two years. كنت بدون شغل ولا أي شيء كنت قاعدة يعني ما تعلمت ولا أي شيء. So um, your mama came to Jordan from Syria in 2013, and the first two to three years of that experience after moving were very difficult because she um, was not working at the time. Um, and so Salam, can you tell us about your experience coming to Jordan? Hello, اسمي سلام حمد البريدي. عمري 25 سنة ودخلت الأردن ب 2013. So, um, is oh, mute. So, uh, Salam is, is 25 years old and she came to, to Jordan in um, 2013. So, um, can you guys both tell me about what you were studying or working as before you came? And how did your plans change after you came to Jordan? So um, at the time before your mama came to Jordan from Syria, she was preparing for uh, to finish high school and was not able to do so at the time uh, because of the war. And so she, she came to Jordan and um, had worked on a diploma initially before she found out about EFE's programming. And then she registered with us later and she'll tell us uh, about her experience in just a moment. Um, and Salam, the same question for you. Tell us about what you were studying or doing before coming to Jordan. قبل ما اجي انا على الاردن كنت طالبه في المرحله الثانويه في المدرسه بعد ما اجت على الاردن استطعت الحمد لله تكميل دراستي الثانويه وبعدها حصلت على منحه لدراسه الصيدله في جامعه الزيتون الاردنيه وتخرجت عام 2020 um, so Salam was also um, studying in Syria before she came to Jordan, and when she um, moved here afterwards, she was able to continue her studies, and in 2020, she finished a program for pharmaceuticals. Um, so Yamama, can you tell us about your experience um, before participating in EFE's training and then the courses that you took? أول شيء أنا ما كنت أشتغل كنت أتدرب يعني بمكان معين فما كان عطيني أي فرص منيحة بعدين لما درست مع لي في عطوني فرص كتير منيحة إني اشتغلت بمكان كتير كويس بس قبل أنا ما كان عندي أي فرصة منيحة بسوق العمل نهائيا. And can you tell us which training you took? التجميل أنا نيل تكنشلا. Sure. So, so your mom is saying that with the studies that she was doing, the diploma that she was studying in, in Jordan before taking EFE's course, um, that she wasn't 
getting or finding any good opportunities at the time. And so she enrolled with us in um, a, a beauty project where she learned how to become a nail technician and uh, now works in a salon in, in Amman. Um, and so Salam, can you also tell us about your experience uh, in the labor market in Jordan and the courses that you took with EFE? Yes. بعد تخرجي من جامعة زيتونة في تخصص الصيدلة للأسف كانت صدمة كبيرة إنه أنا كسورية ما بقدر أشتغل بهذا المجال حسب قانون العمل الأردني لا يحق الجنسيات الأخرى مزاولة مهنة الصيدلة هون بلشت أبحث عن بدائل لحتى أقدر أنا أشتغل وأكون فعالة في المجتمع الحمد لله حصلت على منحة بالأي إف إي درست فيها إدارة مواقع التواصل الاجتماعي وسقط لي مهارات كثير كبيره وفرت لي عمل بهذا المجال Um, so Salam was surprised to find that when she graduated from Zaytuna University after studying pharmaceuticals, that she was not actually able to find work in this field. So as a Syrian, she was able to study pharmacy in Jordan, um, but then realized after graduating that this is actually one of the sectors, um, like Cheyenne mentioned, that is closed uh, to refugees for work. And so uh, when she realized this, she started work looking for alternative options uh, for a job, and she uh, ended up enrolling in a program at EFA. Um, so both of you guys, could you tell me um, what, uh, what is the biggest lesson you've learned from your journey and that you want to share with others? أنا أكثر شيء تعلمت أول شيء لما أجيت من سوريا كانت شخصيتي كثير ضعيفة بعدين مع الدراسة مع الـ EFE قوت لي كثير شخصيتي وصارت شخصيتي أحسن الحياة ما بتوقف على شغلة معينة لازم الواحد يطول من حاله لازم يشتغل على حاله حياة ما بتوقف لا على حرب ولا على غربة ولا على أي شيء لازم تطور من حالك لازم تشتغلي لازم ما تحكي إنه هذا الوطن مو وطني ما أفيده ما تستفيدي أنت كمان أنت بدك تعيشي بحياة طبيعية كتير مثل ما كنت تعيشيها قبل وأحسن بدي أشارك مع الباقيين إنك أنت تطلعي اشتغلي جربي درسي في دي حالك في دي المجتمع اللي أنت فيه um, so your mom is saying that b before coming to Jordan that um, she was shy in a certain way, but that coming here, her life didn't stop because she came to Jordan um, and that war doesn't stop you, that leaving home doesn't stop you from trying to uh, pursue your goals and that you have to continue trying to, um, to, to, to push yourself. Um, and Salam, I, I just want to take one step back. So what, if you could tell us what your current job is now after your training with EFE, um, and then the, the lesson that you've taken away from this experience that you want to share. حاليا أنا الآن مديرة مواقع التواصل الاجتماعي بإضافة إلى أنه أنا استطعت أفتح شغلي الخاص بتصنيع منتجات طبيعية تجميلية للبشرة خالي من أي مواد كيميائية بهذا الشغل أنا دمجت الأشياء اللي تعلمتها من الـ EFE التصوير ودمجت كمان الأشياء اللي تعلمتها بالتخصصي أنا الصيدلة أكبر درس تعلمته بحياتي أنه الإنسان الذكي هو الإنسان اللي بيستطيع تغيير مساراته وخططه لتتناسب مع ظروفه. Um, so Salam is, uh, I should also mention, she took one of our self-employment trainings that, um, that Ghadir had talked about. And so she's currently uh, producing different types of beauty products. Uh, natural beauty products that are that are free of harmful chemicals and so she found a way to actually combine uh, the knowledge that she gained studying pharmaceuticals as well as uh, the skills that she took during EFE's training which included uh, marketing and, and how to, um, to to sell her products and um, the, the the lesson that she would like to share is is um, pushing yourself and making the best out of your circumstances whatever those may be. Um, so that, that concludes the, the set questions that we have, but we just uh, wanted to give you guys um, an, an introduction to some of our alumni. And so as Ghadir said, please keep in mind if you have any questions um, that in just a moment we'll be having um, a Q&A. And if you would like to, to ask our uh, alumni or any of our other speakers anything, we'd be happy to give you more information. Great. So thank you, Lizzie, and uh, thank you, Salam and uh, Yamama. Uh, this was very helpful, and I hope this encourages people to people who are watching us, joining us today, to ask uh, more questions if if they like to learn more about uh, uh, any of uh, the the topics that we discussed today, whether about uh, EFE uh, EFE programs, uh, anything uh, uh, within the the AFDs. 
uh, uh, strategies or the Ministry of uh, Labor. Um, I think we now uh, uh, open it for uh, questions and, and answers. And I think I've, I'm already seeing a few questions in the chat box. Uh, one question is uh, asking us to speak about the digital freelancing uh, that EFE has begun training on. Uh, th th thank you for, for this question. I'm, I'm happy to answer it. So actually during the Corona, we were implementing, um, before Corona, we were implementing a few uh, programs. And then, and then of course, everyone was shocked with, and the whole economy and the whole uh, sectors were, were disturbed with what was happening. And in order to continue our mission and to continue helping youth in Jordan uh, generate income, um, we started thinking about uh, different designs and different approaches towards our programs. Uh, in collaboration with different partners, uh, we always uh, think, think with as a think tank, we thought creating an online freelancing approach could be a very good solution to uh, different uh, uh, refugees and Jordanians actually in Jordan. So we started this program where we believe there are lots of jobs usually in, in the market, but also there is a parallel universe of jobs uh, that take place virtually. Uh, and we, we started uh, finding and identifying these virtual jobs uh, online and then uh, train our youth to be able to build their profiles on, on different platforms that enable them to become online freelancers and also uh, train them on different uh, skills, technical skills in most of the cases to enable them to become online freelancers on technical, specific technical areas, such as, I'll give you examples. For example, we find that uh, graphic freelance graphic designers uh, are needed online on virtual jobs. So somebody sitting in, in a different country is uh, perhaps asking uh, for uh, a graphic design uh, from, you know, a service from somebody else, wherever they sit, whatever they're doing. So we train our youth to be able to bid on these opportunities, uh, to price their, uh, their levels of efforts, uh, how to collect money, how to, how to do the graphic design itself as a technical uh, uh, aspect as well. So these are uh, areas that we developed uh, within EFE and were able to um, deliver to our youth. Uh, we worked with different donors uh, on that. AFD actually was the first uh, we launched uh, this program with. And then uh, more um, donors and more supporters started funding us uh, so that we uh, uh, help as many youth uh, as possible. Uh, some donors also, such as AFD, were also very generous to, to, um, to provide laptops for these people uh, who need laptops, who, who need laptops to become online freelancers anyways. So uh, uh, it created a great, um, opportunity for youth to be linked uh, to these jobs, actually. Uh, how do refugees find out about the EFE programs? Uh, most, most of our applicants know about us from uh, social media, uh, both uh, Jordanians and refugees, uh, uh, especially youth, and, and you all know uh, about uh, how, how youth are connected with the social media and uh, especially Facebook, Instagram, and others. So we post uh, all our programs on our uh, pages, Facebook pages and Instagram, uh, LinkedIn pages uh, that enable youth to learn more about us. And there are always links and uh, telephone numbers that uh, allow them to learn more uh, about these programs. Um, are private sector employment partners in Jordan willing to meet you in the middle? Uh, it's easy to find companies looking for a cheap source of employees. Now, uh, so this is a very good question. Uh, the, the economy in Jordan is really uh, just like any other economy uh, in the world, especially after the COVID-19, uh, has been really facing difficulties uh, recovering. Uh, and and uh, Jordan is one of them. So, but but the employers understand the value of working with our own uh, graduates because they know that they have been trained. They they are very um, connected with the private sector, and uh, they were trained according to what the private sector wants. So they they meet in the middle in terms of uh, giving opportunities for the EFE graduates to be employed uh, within our within their programs actually. 
Uh, what are the retention rates for refugees who secure employment uh, through getting trained by EFE? What is the impact over time? This is a very good question. So uh, now uh, I will perhaps also uh, turn to Hamdan uh, after uh, answering this question. But there are closed jobs and there are uh, open jobs uh, for refugees uh, in Jordan. Uh, Full-time jobs in specific areas have been difficult uh, for refugees to secure. Uh, so uh, the, the job placement rate is usually around 80%, and the retention rate is usually around 70%. But this varies from one uh, sector to the other, uh, from one city to the other. Uh, and also, this is one of the reasons why we thought uh, developing more programs uh, around self-employment, uh, such as uh, what Salam is doing right now, for example, uh, is another option that enabled them to start their own uh, home-based businesses that enabled them to uh, secure income. Uh, but perhaps, uh, Hamdan, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about the open sectors and the closed sectors in Jordan and how the government has dealt with this. Yes, uh, actually, as we all know, uh, in Jordan, we have uh, different uh, elements and factors that could uh, uh, affect uh, the, our uh, labor market situation. Uh, we have uh, the high unemployment rate, and we have a, a big number of Jordanian graduates from uh, uh, college and universities with a specific uh, specialist, specialties, actually. Uh, since uh, the, 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 the base here, is all is most of the economic sectors in Jordan are open uh, for uh, refugees and uh, and uh, migrant workers, but actually uh, we have a closed profession within these sectors, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, because due to uh, the, the high uh, unemployment rates and the rise of Jordanian work also. Uh, so uh, we are we have uh, just like uh, the uh, the uh, uh, professions in the in the medical field uh, just like doctors uh, nurses uh, pharmacists and so on uh, teachers also uh, it's closed actually uh, engineer engineering also closed uh, administrative uh, professions also all, all, also closed uh, but we have also, as you know, the industrial uh, uh, sector, we have uh, the agriculture, we have the construction, we have uh, many actually uh, opportunities for Syrians and, and uh, refugees and also migrant workers. Thank you, Hamdan. Um, Lauren, I'll, I'm, I'm checking your question. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting one. And if you allow me, I'll, I'll try to jump in over here. You're asking about how the government uh, considers freelancers. Uh, and, and I think th th this question uh, goes for both uh, refugees uh, and Jordanians as well, because uh, uh, working as freelancers is the informal sector in the end. And uh, how do they deal with it? Do they allow refugees to work remotely for foreign companies in the tech sector? I think the question is not only whether the refugees are allowed, also if Jordanians are allowed to work as freelancers uh, in the end. Uh, but I get your question regarding uh, the ICT sector, because in normal cases, yes, uh, refugees do not work in the ICT sector uh, in Jordan. but. The, the online uh, freelancing is not yet regulated by the government anyways, because there are uh, international platforms that people go to and people apply to, bid to, and be able to contribute to. I, I do, it's not um, regulated by the government. Uh, it's still in the informal sector. So, of course, there are more benefits in the formal sector for um, Jordanians and uh, Syrian refugees and refugees in general, uh, which, which also goes to another question. Question I have uh, seen about the ILO definition of the decent uh, jobs and the decent job environments and whether the online freelancing secure that or not. Uh, that's also a great question. As part of uh, the, the training programs we provide uh, our youth who become online freelancers, uh, we uh, help them identify uh, the risks uh, that they might feel or, or face on uh, the, the platforms uh, uh, that they work with as freelancers and how to mitigate that, how to protect themselves uh, from any sort of um, harassment, even uh, online uh, sort of uh, struggle they might face. And we train them for that and we 
uh, we'd also, we also mentor them uh, in case uh, uh, th there is anything they like to share with us or if they need support in, in anything uh, else. There are always risks in, in all of the sectors that we provide our youth with specific training uh, to uh, uh, have them uh, you know, enroll into a decent uh, uh, work environment for sure, which is very essential uh, to us. Another question, uh, do you have any experience in establishing pathways for employment within the humanitarian uh, sector so the refugees can support humanitarian operations as camp management and so on? Uh, also outside the context of Jordan, if that better applies. Uh, thank you for your uh, question. Um, so uh, we have been trying to work in the camps, in the refugee camps uh, themselves. Uh, so far, EFE has not worked inside the Syrian refugee camps, but we have worked inside uh, uh, one of the Palestinian refugee camps, which uh, has uh, its own characteristics. Um, so we work with partners, we call them community-based organizations, uh, where uh, they sometimes pr provide humanitarian services um, for the refugees, and uh, we come in uh, to complement it with the livelihood uh, uh, support uh, for people who need uh, these sorts of, um, of, of support in order to generate income. Um, so we don't necessarily, as EFE, do humanitarian operations or humanitarian support, but we partner uh, with several, several partners who concentrate on that, and then we complement each other by providing uh, uh, youth with uh, uh, the skills needed uh, so that they can generate uh, income. I hope I answered the questions. I'm trying Adir, to speak. why don't I uh, jump in here for a minute because there's, there's a question for you, Mama and Salam. So, uh, Dan, and your, your, in response to your question, the first one for EFE is whether or not our finding a job as a job training provides training for online job applications or it's only focusing on freelance jobs. Um, so the, the online freelancing track is something separate that came uh, as a result of the, the corona era. The, the finding a job as a job training is actually something that predates that era. So that training, um, again, is a short term three to five day training targeting university students um, that provides them with the, the skills to conduct a job hunt. So it's focusing on uh, how to network, how to make a profile on LinkedIn, how to sit for an interview, how to put together a CV. So the, the course content for, for that particular curriculum is going to focus on, on both um, the online job application process uh, as well as the in-person interview process. Um, and then I see you have a second question for um, Yamama and Salam. How did you hear about EFV and get involved? in the program and was it uh, through social media? And to keep some out on the program, I mean, on the way, on social media, or how? I was in the first diploma that I did, I was working on it, I was working on it, so my friends told me that it was the design, they told me that there was a place in the EFE, and I was able to do it, 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 and I was able to do it. So uh, your mama actually found out about our program through some friends who saw one of our advertisements. Okay, so her, so her friends saw the advertisement on social media and informed her about it because they know that she's interested in beauty. So they let her know, uh, thinking that she might be interested in it. And then she she checked it out and, and ended up registering. Uh, yes, on social media. Uh, salam through social media as well, through Facebook? Yes. Facebook, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you, Lizzie. I'd like to also mention that we have a strong relationship with the UNHCR, uh, which is the UN agency taking care of the, the refugees uh, in Jordan, and they have a great database of, of refugees where we share our ads with them, and then they post it on their uh, links and, and channels and so on, and this is also how we get uh, in touch with, with more applicants uh, uh, Syrian applicants uh, in particular. Uh, if the time allows, I'd like to ask uh, Cheyenne uh, if you could very quickly let us know whether you have plans as AFD to work with other refugees in Jordan other than the Syrian refugees. Um, perhaps we're, we're curious to know more about your, your plans in the future, Cheyenne. Yeah, and, uh, and this will be uh... And this will not be an answer to your question because uh, 
uh, this year we are um, waiting for the for new, for the new doctrine uh, in terms of uh, this financing tool we have in uh, the grant tool we have so uh, basically this will be uh, discussed uh, by the french government this year but uh, i'd like to take this opportunity to uh, to come back uh, just uh, one second on the um, uh, questions related to the freelancing because actually those were the same questions we uh, we had uh, at AFD level, uh, we are talking about informal sector, we are talking about um, uh, um, people without access to uh, the national social protection system, uh, unless um, voluntary contribution. Uh, and uh, we are talking about ILO standards. So how could we fit uh, to uh, our uh, those international standards which are also ours uh, at AFG and uh, it's important to mention the the fact that um, uh, initially the the program we have we had with IFI targeted especially the the, the hospitality sector uh, which is one of the sector uh, open for um, for work for refugees uh, and COVID happened COVID-19 happened uh, with the lockdown in uh, in Jordan, with um, a, a, a very huge impact on the on the hospitality sector, uh, so we had to adapt with Ifi, and Ifi came with this um, pilot project to uh, to to start uh, with uh, with a few uh, with a few um, uh, beneficiaries of the program, a new approach uh, with uh, with this freelancing um, uh, uh, tools and uh, trainings, and we started that in this very um, specific context and at that time and we do we do not regret it uh, we chose to be pragmatic uh, to be uh, practical in, in order to um, to address the, the the issues of employment as much as we could through this um, joint program with ifi uh, and uh, this was uh, we we just to say that we had the same concern the same comments the same questions and uh, we had a huge debate uh, with um, with our headquarters on this, uh, and in the end, it came out. It came up with uh, if he came up with this uh, freelancing uh, approach, uh, which is uh, to me quite a success, uh, at least for the pilot project, which is already achieved, um, and uh, therefore our willingness to uh, to continue the discussion. But in the same time, we we would also like to discuss with the government, with the uh, Social Security Corporation, uh, on how to integrate those people, for instance, into those uh, the, the national social protection system. Right. I just wanted right. to, to mention this context. Excellent. Thank you so much, Cheyenne. I think uh, this brings us to uh, the, the last minute of uh, the session, handing it to uh, Lorraine, maybe if you want to, to have some closing remarks uh, of this session. And thank you again. Yes, thank you so much. And I think that there's definitely a lot of interest in the digital freelancing um, remote workspace. Um, for everyone in the audience, we have a few more sessions on free and dig digital livelihoods for refugees. I invite you to, to, to join them. And Hamdan and Shema, I'll definitely get in touch with you about this because I think there's a lot of interest in this space. Everyone else in the audience, thank you so much for being here. Gadir, Elizabeth, everyone, thank you very much. And we well, we invite you to, to attend our other sessions. And thank you. Ramadan Karim to everyone and see you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye.